So, we, in early classes, we looked at uh, the effect of alloying elements, how the alloying elements aggregate during solidification and that can lead to the embrittlement of the elements. Um, so, we looked at the effect of carbon, uh, uh, silicon, uh, um, uh, aluminum as well as the, the phosphorus aggregation on the grand boundary uh, during solidification uh, of the weld microstructures. Uh, especially in resistance part welding, it is very significant, right. So, now when you look at uh, the partitioning and we look at uh, carbon partitioning, or phosphorus partitioning to the uh, solidifying uh, liquid at the well center line as well as the well, uh, the uh, um, primary solidification grind boundary as well as secondary grind boundary uh, and that can lead to the embrittlement. And we looked at uh, the adding the uh, other beneficial alloying elements. For example, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in order to control the, the phosphorus aggregation, uh, how boron can be very useful because the, when you add boron and uh, boron stops the phosphor atoms coming to the, inter, uh, the interface between the solid liquid uh, and the grain boundaries and thereby we can reduce the phosphorus aggregation. And uh, we looked at uh, the results of that uh, uh, the experiments where uh, the boron addition can effectively uh, reduce the phosphorus migration. Uh, thereby improving the mechanical properties. But now uh, uh, that, that uh, the addition of boron or changing the chemistries, it is not always uh, uh, viable and because that is actually a still development uh, work. Uh, so, what happens if you are given a microstructure, uh, if you are given a composition, whether we can modify the well thermal cycle in such a way that uh, we can avoid this embrittlement problem. Can we mitigate the weld welding process in such a way that you know, we can reduce the segregation uh, of these alloying elements and thereby can we reduce the embrittlement. I am going to show you uh, it is possible to do uh, um, uh, the uh, to modify the weld thermal cycle as well as uh, to improve the mechanical properties by this modification. We look at the same example steel what I talked about in earlier uh, in one of my lectures. Uh, we have uh, steels of a very uh, carbon 0 0.07 with a very increasing very uh, large amount of phosphorus which is not conventionally added. We just added it just to show whether it is possible to generate uh, advanced ice and steel with high amount of phosphorus. Okay, so, we looked at the effect of uh, the phosphorus and boron uh, on the segregation behavior and we look at one case. So, for example, only steel CP. Uh, we uh, it showed uh, uh, the partial uh, plug failure right so because of the phosphorus uh, segregation so now we need to say make sure that uh, this uh, weld of uh, the steel cp doesn't uh, fail in the weld zone so, uh, so we, we can add phosphor boron uh, to avoid the failure of the weldments uh, uh, at the uh, interface uh, to in order to achieve the full uh, plug failure but now the, the steel chemistry is fixed Say for example, we have only steel CP, we cannot add boron. Can we modify the weld thermal cycle in such a way that uh, we can improve the mechanical properties of steel CP? Okay. It is possible, uh, we look at uh, one modification in weld thermal cycle. Uh, before that, I will explain uh, how this modification can be carried out. Uh, so, this modification we can do that by applying a second pulse. Uh, during resistance part welding. So, in conventional single pulse uh, resistance part welding what we do is again recall our lectures um, in the resistance part welding. So, we have an, uh, uh, the current cycle where we give an uh, amperage of our 5.5 to 6 kilo amperes and we can uh, recall that we can uh, identify the actual current uh, uh, where, um, the amperage uh, from the well growth curves. We can identify, we can apply an, an amount of load required to keep the phasing interfaces together uh, and then uh, we can play around with the pulsing parameters and to achieve the varying uh, well nugget size, right. So, now we have, uh, instead of doing a uh, single pulsing, in order to avoid, in order to uh, reduce the uh, segregation or in order to homogenize the alloying elements in the well nugget, we can also apply uh, a second pulsing. So, instead of having only single pulse, we can also apply a second first pulsing um, in, uh, and uh, whether uh, it is going to improve mechanical properties or not, we will see in the subsequent slides. Right now, we see that the effect on in the weld, uh, welding parameters. So, instead of using a, a single pulsing, we do a, a double pulsing. In double pulsing, what we do is uh, in a single pulsing, we have an, a single uh, current uh, uh, um, pulse is given and uh, by giving this pulse and, and, the, and the load, and we achieve uh, a uh, well nugget of uh, say for example, uh, uh, so and so diameter we get, this is a well nugget diameter, well nugget right in the resistance spot welding. 
So, now instead of giving a single pulse after uh, uh, and a first pulse and we will also apply a second uh, and current pulse as shown in over this figure and by doing so we may also remelt with uh, the first nugget which is formed uh, during pus pulsing and that can uh, inf influence uh, favorably the, um, the alloying element which are actually segregating at the well center line. So, we will see in, uh, in the subsequent slides how we can do that. So, what happens in single pulsing? So, single pulsing we generate an uh, uh, well nugget. So, this is sheet 1 uh, top sheet and this is bottom sheet. Uh, so, when you are applying uh, an, uh, uh, using an electrode We, we, we pass a current and we also apply a load and doing so we melt the interface and form what you known as well nugget right and, and you these regions are the heat affected zone regions. And uh, during this pass, pass, single pulsing what happens so this is a well nugget and this is HHZ what you see over here and this is a base material. And if you look at uh, uh, in a somewhat higher magnification, you see very clearly the columnar grains which are actually uh, grown from the fusion boundary towards the well center line. And during this process, uh, the uh, alloying elements are uh, trying to segregate at the well center line because that is the region which solidifies at the last, right. So, when the grains are solidifying from this direction, you will have a segregation at the well center line. Uh, because of the solidification of these liquid over here it takes place at the end and uh, the uh, alloying elements such as carbon phosphorus would be migrating towards the well center line uh, when uh, the, the solidification happens in uh, from the fusion boundary. Okay. So, now if you apply uh, uh, load to this microstructure, so when you are doing an cross tension test for example, when you pull apart these two regions, so what will happen? So, this is the region where uh, you expect a failure a cracked nucleate because that is the uh, um, the interface which is there and you also see this interface is like an a notch is not it. So, this interface locked act as a notch and then there will be a stress concentration here at this point when you are pulling along uh, in, in a tensile direction along this uh, uh, yeah, as shown in this uh, figure and obviously you will have stress concentration and then you will have a crack propagating uh, along this well center line. And then if because of the brittle elements that are segregated at the well center line and you will have a crack propagation and then if you have a high amount of segregation uh, you will have a complete interface failure. Um, so, if the segregation is minimal or if you do not have any detriment element like carbon phosphorus then you may end up having cracks going like this because the microstructure over here is very strong right this is magnetic microstructure and you will end up uh, fracturing at the uh, heat affected zone that is very good ok. But because of the segregation of alloying elements at the well center line you most likely if you have uh, carbon phosphorus segregation and you will have a crack propagating from uh, at the tip of the fusion boundary and going towards the well center line. Say for example, uh, you expect a crack um, to happen uh, nucleate uh, at this region and propagate and then moment it, it reaches a critical limit and because of very strong segregation you will have a failure of the plug ok. Whether it is partial and if you have a high segregation you will have a complete interface failure where we have a plug ratio of 0 ok. So, now what happens to the single uh, uh, double pulsing? In double pulsing and what we do is uh, we also have an additional pulse current pulse is given. Um, up, uh, uh, apart from this uh, the first pulsing which is actually used to make the well nugget right. In the second pulsing, so this is the first pulse and you would uh, uh, the, the first pulse area so what you over here and this is the, the first pulsing and because of the second pulse the current you are given you remelt the some of the regions inside the, uh, the first pulse and the, uh, the nugget which is created by the first pulse. So, this is uh, the primary well nugget and this is the secondary well nugget which is formed after the second pulsing. This is uh, clearly seen from uh, this image where you have uh, the primary well nugget which is formed from the, the first pulsing and then after applying a second pulsing you will have a second uh, melting of the well, uh, this well center and then you have a, a secondary well nugget that is formed um, after the second pulsing. And this can be beneficial 
and because uh, of uh, the uh, basically what you do here is applying second pulsing you do a heat treatment okay you do a heat treatment of uh, the well nuggets which is actually formed by the first pulsing okay so you apply a second thermal cycle uh, which can uh, do a homogenization of the regions uh, somewhere over here for example or re because of remelting you may also have uh, segregation effects are reduced uh, in the regions. We will see in the subsequent slides what happens uh, in chemically uh, and uh, when you are applying in a second uh, pulsing. You clearly see uh, uh, in the uh, uh, curves is where uh, uh, the, the mechanical properties certainly improve for example uh, the blue curve here it shows the cross and uh, cross tension tensile stress uh, tensile test results um, where uh, the first pulsing it shows very poor strength whereas after applying a second pulsing your strength level increases significantly you also have a high displacement that is mean uh, th that means that the mechanical properties improve significantly. So, you will see in the, the first pulsing case the blue case what you see over here is the, the, the failure nucleated at the interface from the uh, from the, uh, the heat of the zone and then it propagated along the well center line and then uh, the failure of uh, the uh, plug happened in a partial plug re, uh, way mode. So, the, uh, the crack propagated and then it failed and then it broken it has broken at the middle of the well nugget and this is not it is not uh, advisable failure mode because you have a, a plug failed uh, and in the second case when you have a double pulsing and you see that strength is increased and displacement also increased that means the mechanic properties are improved significantly. So, if you look at the failure mode, uh, so the moment you have a failure initiated and then uh, the regions uh, where you see a boundary between the primary and the secondary well nugget, the boundary between the secondary and the primary well nugget. So, this regions, the moment your crack reaches that region, so what happens? The crack is deflected. That means that your well nugget is intact, majority the uh, secondary well nugget is in, intact. So, you improve the mechanical property significantly by doing a second pulsing, okay. And then second pulsing increased the, the plug size as well. So, it will increase uh, significantly the plug size, the plug is intact. You see that the plug has come out uh, um, intact, in the, in almost 80 percent of the plug is intact. Uh, that means that uh, it is uh, much more acceptable uh, failure mode compared to the, the single pulsing case. But there is no significant variation in the harness in the both the cases in both harness showed that means that uh, showed similar harness variation that means that no mechanic in the harness wise there is no problem. Uh, but we have a significant improvement in the, uh, the failure mode as well as the mechanical property. That means that second pulsing is beneficial to uh, to, uh, to improve the mechanical properties, but how it does the second pulsing uh, help in improving the mechanical properties? That is a big question, right? We need to understand what happens when you apply a second pulsing. So, for that uh, we again we will have to look at uh, uh, the, uh, the thermal cycles and subsequently how the thermal cycle, the change in thermal cycle uh, leading is leading to uh, change in the segregation of alloying elements in the, uh, in the well zone uh, during single as well as double pulsing case. So, the uh, first we will begin with uh, the thermal cycle. So, these are all uh, calculated thermal cycle using an FEM simulations. So, if you have a, a single pulsing, what we do is at the well center, um, so the temperature reaches much above the liquidus temperature and subsequently uh, you cool to room temperature. And the well center and the well edge based on the peak temperatures, so you know you may end up having uh, either melting or uh, heat of the zone. Right. In, in the weld edge, the melting point is, is below uh, as, uh, the, the peak temperature reached uh, during welding is below melting point, whereas in well center the peak temperature reached is uh, much above melting point. So, you will end up having uh, the molten regions between the well center and the weld edge. Okay. In a single pulsing, we are not uh, doing any uh, uh, heat treatment. So, uh, from the peak temperature material is uh, the weld is cooled to room temperature. And because of double pulsing and instead of cooling uh, after uh, uh, you are forming a, a molten region, so you cool it to some temperature and then because of second pulsing the material is again heated up to another temperature and subsequently upon uh, heating up 
uh, we cool to room temperature. So, we modify the thermal cycle uh, in from uh, continuous cooling from uh, uh, well, uh, liquidus temperature and the well center uh, upon uh, cooling to uh, some temperature we will again heat it up uh, like in a post well heat treatment ok. So, we will again heat it up and subsequently we will cool to room temperature. It same happens at the well center as well as the well edge. Uh, uh, only thing is in, uh, in the, the wells uh, edge the peak temperature reached in the fall cycle is also lower and we will also have uh, an uh, effect of uh, peak temperature is seen very clearly by comparing the well center and the well edge ok. So, it is very clear right. So, in a single pulsing uh, we are cooling continuously from uh, uh, solidification temperature to room temperature whereas, in uh, double pulsing instead of cooling to room temperature upon cooling to uh, say some temperature uh, where we have a soli complete solidification and then uh, we increase the temperature to slightly higher and then subsequently we cool to room temperature. And this increasing temperature uh, 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 can cause a very positive effect uh, by homogenizing the uh, microstructure uh, in, uh, and the composition. Uh, which we already saw in the, in the optical microscopy uh, because of this reheating and this, uh, we form uh, secondary well nugget. So, this is uh, the first well nugget sorry and because of the reheating we have uh, melting at the re in the regions and we, we form uh, secondary well nugget and because of this heating right and uh, we look at uh, the how the alloying elements uh, segregate uh, during this process. So, we can simulate again and uh, I will show you the uh, uh, results of the simulations which we can use it to understand what happens to the alloying elements during this uh, uh, post pulsing or post well heat treatment. So, we'll again we look at uh, the, the microstructure evolution. So, we have simulated uh, the similar well thermal cycles where we have uh, and both the cases well center and well edge we cool to some temperature and subsequently we take it to other temperature. Uh, so, in a single pulsing case we will continuously cool to room temperature whereas, in double pulsing case so instead of cooling to room temperature we will take it to again to some temperatures and then subsequently cool it back to room temperature ok. So, at time t0 everything is liquid right it is well center. So, everything is liquid over here you see here uh, and then you will have a uniform distribution of carbon, manganese, silicon, phosphorus in the liquid. It is a single phase liquid right. So, when it is liquid the all the elements are homogeneously distributed. And then uh, when you start cooling down after uh, uh, the current is passed if you switch off the current the, uh, the pulsing is completed when you are when it cool down. Say for example, uh, when uh, uh, when you reach a temperature of 600, 1600 Kelvin and you have a, a partial solidification of uh, the uh, delta ferrite for example, in this case we have a delta ferrite as well as uh, the austenite forming ok. And during this process what happens because of the, uh, the uh, solubility difference between delta ferrite austenite in the and the liquid and you will have a segregation of carbon and uh, um, uh, phosphorus and uh, phosphorus manganese silicon. Uh, at the intertentic boundaries as well as at the liquid front ok. So, you will have a segregation based on the, uh, the solubility uh, of uh, the elements in delta ferrite and in liquid and you will have a segregation at the intertentic boundaries as well as uh, at the solidification front because that is the region where the carbon atoms are migrating from the delta ferrite to the liquid ok. And subsequently if you cool uh, further and your solidification is, is getting completed and you will also have uh, uh, the segregation becomes uh, very predominant. Uh, for example, uh, uh, at this case you still have some liquid is left at this well center line. Uh, for example, in the simulation shows and uh, this is a fusion boundary and this is well center line. And you already see that in a well center line uh, the carbon concentration if, uh, if you begin with 0 0.07, but the carbon concentration can go up to uh, 0.58 percent. Similarly, manganese can go uh, as high as 0 0.5 and silicon up to 2 percent uh, um, uh, and the phosphorus can also go, go up to 0 0.158 percent ok. And subsequently if you uh, cool down at this point the solidification is completed 
and you see a, a significant amount of uh, segregation that is the well central line segregation we always study right. So, well central line is now enriched in carbon, uh, carbon concentration is uh, as high as uh, 0.5 even if you begin with 0.5. So, this is the region where we expect an uh, interface failure to happen uh, uh, at the well central line. So, now uh, so uh, in our case we have an, a secondary pulse we are given second pulse double pulse has given and during this process uh, instead of cooling room temperature what we will do. So, we are now taking again whatever solidified to another temperature ok. So, again we are heating up to another temperature you already see there is a homogenization you see homogenization happened from uh, um, uh, at the well center line. Uh, by carbon and phosphorus segregation is really reduced you see that in previous graph. Uh, for example, in this graph you see uh, the carbon concentration is enriching whereas, if you heat it up instead of cold solidifying to room temperature cooling to room temperature if you heat it up you see the carbon uh, already is homogenizing ok. Similarly, phosphorus also uh, homogenizing because of the second heating. And subsequently, if you cool down, you will also increase homogenization because still the material is in very high temperature, right? So it will be about 1300 to 600 Kelvin uh, uh, temperature. So what will what is the result? Actually, we are seeing that in the only single pulsing, uh, in the experimental result also we see uh, 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 segregation of phosphorus, uh, silicon, and manganese at the boundaries dendritic boundaries you see here in this picture you see uh, at the dendritic boundaries the manganese are all enriching uh, uh, the boundaries silicon is enriching as well as phosphorus also enriching the grain bound the solidification boundaries uh, at the uh, at the center as well as the uh, the edge and you see the the calculation results uh, what i showed in previous re, uh, result previous slide also you see the clear segregation of phosphorus manganese uh, silicon and manganese at the uh, at dendritic boundaries which is clearly seen also in the experiment uh, by the elemental mapping uh, electron probe microanalysis mapping uh, and the same it is actually shown uh, um, at the edge region and you also see a segregation of uh, uh, the manganese, silicon and phosphorus at the grand boundaries you see the bright regions they are all segregated uh, regions which are nothing but uh, the identitic boundaries uh, during solidification. Surprisingly if you look at uh, the elemental distribution uh, at the edge on the regions on the edge regions uh, after double pulsing after the second pulse you see already the regions are all homogenized you see that there is no distribution the phosphorus is distributed very homogeneously similarly the amount of, uh, of manganese at the well center line uh, you see uh, sees a decrease significantly you see that regions so that means that uh, the double pulsing indeed uh, now homogenizes the segregation which actually formed uh, and it will also be can clearly seen from the, the EPMA uh, line scans uh, at various regions. So this is the experimental line scan uh, during the second pulsing. So, for example, line scan is carried out somewhere here, somewhere over there, for example, somewhere over here uh, during single after single and double pulsing. Uh, you, you see clearly the manganese is, is segregating uh, in some regions those regions are all the boundaries similar silicon is segregating and phosphorus is segregating at the boundaries whereas after double pulsing you see that phosphorus silicon as well as manganese is more or less the same in uh, almost all the regions that means that the segregated uh, regions at the grand boundaries are all homogenizing. That is what is also shown from the uh, uh, simulation results uh, and the simulations what is so here is the, the segregation of uh, manganese silicon uh, and uh, phosphorus uh, during a single pulsing whereas in double pulsing you see that the phosphorus is ex completely homogenizing um, after the second pulsing which is the effect is very significantly seen in the phosphorus case that means that second pulse helps. Uh, in uh, avoiding the segregation of uh, phosphorus uh, particularly uh, which is actually very beneficial if you do not have phosphorus segregation and your embrittlement decreases uh, significantly. Uh, and uh, uh, the results of cross tension test uh, we already shown uh, in the previous slide after double pulsing the strength is increasing uh, compared to the single first case and also the, uh, the failure mode the plug ratio 
uh, what is plug ratio again recall from my previous lectures the the, plug, the size of the plug after the test testing and the size of the well nugget the ratio of that and after the double pulsing the plug ratio is also increasing significantly okay and that is mainly due to the reduction of uh, phosphorus segregation after double pulsing so the phosphorus segregation decreases significantly at the grand boundaries and the well center line and leading to uh, the improved uh, mechanical properties. So, that means that, uh, so you do not need to change the chemistry by carefully manipulating the well thermal cycle, we can still improve the mechanical properties of advanced ice and steels, that is the lesson I want to give you. And uh, the, its understanding is possible uh, mainly because of the calculations uh, and the understanding of the elemental behavior uh, during uh, uh, welding. So, that is the lesson I want to give you uh, for you that it is very important to understand the physics behind the process, how the segregation happens uh, during solidification and once you understand the fundamentals uh, uh, what I explained in this uh, lecture very clearly, we can improve the mechanical properties of these um, wells either by modifying the alloying elements or by changing the well thermal cycle. So, in this case for example, uh, what you have done is we, 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 we we change the well thermal cycle uh, instead of using single pulsing, uh, using a double pulsing and uh, double pulsing leading to homogenization of uh, the alloying elements especially phosphorus and but thereby reducing the uh, embrittlement at the well center line and the grand boundaries. So, the lesson I want to give you from this uh, uh, lectures is the conventionally what we are doing is we do a resistance spot welding okay and then uh, you uh, look at uh, the, uh, the thermal cycle, how uh, what thermal cycle is you are going to apply and then uh, the microstructure, analyze the microstructure and, and uh, investigate why the weld is failing. But now what you have done, uh, what you need to understand is now you first to make yourself uh, comfortable with the physics, uh, the, uh, the metallurgy of uh, uh, these advanced ice and steels uh, uh, during welding. So, once you understand that and instead of um, playing around uh, with the welding parameters to get the better mechanical properties, uh, you know that what, mic what uh, microstructure you want, what segregation, uh, how homogeneous the elemental distribution should be and then uh, we can. Uh, understand the microstructure evolution and uh, which microstructure thermal cycle can give you this homogenization and subsequently you can have a thermal cycle um, um, predicted, a thermal cycle uh, which can be you know predicted to get these microstructures ultimately you will have um, using that thermal cycle uh, best uh, microstructure. So, instead of uh, um, playing around uh, uh, the, the well thermal cycles to get the better mechanical properties and you identify the mechanical properties and the microstructure and the elemental pattern, elemental segregation behavior which can give you the mechanical properties. Once you know that, we can uh, get thermal cycles needed uh, to achieve these uh, mechanical properties. Uh, so, this is uh, with this uh, we have, I like to conclude this uh, lecture series. Uh, so, the, the lesson I want to give you is uh, it is very important to understand the, the physics and metallurgy of advanced ice and steels. Uh, uh, by understanding the, uh, the physical metallurgy uh, and the fundamentals of the alloying elements behavior and uh, the welding uh, thermal cycles can be identified to weld these uh, steels uh, and we can, we can achieve the best weld uh, from these steels advanced ice and steels. Uh, uh, by carefully uh, understanding the uh, microstructure evolution uh, and uh, the, the correlation between the well thermal cycle and the microstructure. Uh, I also acknowledge uh, some of my colleagues who actually uh, helped me to generate these results uh, from uh, the Delphi Research Technology in Netherlands. I will also acknowledge um, uh, my uh, students who helped me to um, um, organize these uh, slides and uh, uh, to help you uh, when you are uh, doing this course um, through various uh, forums and emails. Uh, thank you.